It is July 3rd, 2008. We're going to be live here for another hour and 50 minutes. David Eich will be with us into the middle of the next hour. He really doesn't need any introduction, and I'm very pleased that he'll spend uh, time with us today. He's very busy. He's uh, running for Parliament uh, right now. He has uh, been the head of the Green Party previously uh, in England. He, of course, is a championship goalie uh, You know, in the big international league. He also, of course, uh, was a big presenter, one of the top presenters on uh, the sports on BBC. What a life he has led, and he is the author of scores of best-selling books, I agree with about 99% of what David Ogg has to say, and now I've got to sometimes say, as weird as things are, who knows, the other 1% might be right. I mean, we're on a planet hurtling through space, and God only knows. And so I really respect him, I appreciate him, and he's just a great speaker and a very interesting mind, riveting individual. And so he wants to first talk about this election, and then I want to get into where he sees things going in the next few years. He's made predictions before, and they've come true, unfortunately. What he's forecasting in the next five to ten years, what he's forecasting in the short term with Iran, how he thinks uh, this is going to play out with the forces of good and evil, where he thinks mankind uh, is going, a conversation with David Icke. And, of course, his website's davidike.com. He has many others, and we have links to those up on infowars.com and prisonplanet.com. David Icke, thank you for spending time with us. Pleasure, Alex. Um, you've got the floor. Talk about whatever you'd like, sir. Well, um, uh, it's kind of interesting. Just in the last um, hour, I'm um, looking at some of the things that are um, happening around me here. What happened was that um, a guy called David Davis, who's a conservative uh, member of parliament, they're in uh, the opposition here to the Labour government, um, uh, he was the Home Affairs spokesman. And when the Labour government forced through with outrageous manipulation, um, a law uh, a few weeks ago to allow, quote, terrorist suspects, in, in other words, once we've got it in the people, to be held for 42 days without charge. He suddenly resigned and said that um, he was uh, going to resign his seat and he was going to stand again in his constituency and seek re-election on the, on the issue, totally one issue, of the big brother state in Britain. Um, yeah, he which, said that the that the police state and the cameras was to oppress, that the government was out of control, unprecedented. Yeah, and and you know it was unprecedented um, uh, from whichever angle you look at it. Um, w this man doing this, and uh, it, you know, I obviously you put him on the back burner, and you you, you see um, how how this plays out. Uh, this uh, guy David Davis. Anyway, um, I'm watching the news um, one night a few uh, well, a couple of weeks ago. And it's uh, clear that uh, the Labour Party is not going to put up a, a candidate against him because they say the uh, election is a farce. For that, put it through the translation decoder, we would get slaughtered, and here's our excuse not to. Um, the, the other major party in Britain, the Liberal Democrats, are not standing against him because they say they agree uh, with what he's doing. And, uh, and so basically he's on his own. So I, I thought, well, OK, I'll stand. And I'll stand for two reasons. One, to have a debate with him about uh, the Big Brother state, and, and two, to point out, and this is the major point, that it is not just the um, arrogant authoritarian Labour government in this country that's bringing in the Big Brother state. It's global, and it doesn't just include surveillance cameras and DNA databases. It's, it's a whole a tapestry of interconnected change, everything from the European Union to the War on terror. Well, well take Texas and other states. They're passing laws that the computer repairman, by the way, he's not paid by the government to do this, must snoop through your computer and have a law enforcement degree to repair computers, not even a pretense of a Fourth Amendment or privacy. They're training all the children publicly in the U.S. and in England now to, to spy on their parents. I mean, it, it, it's like everything has gone into warp drive. Exactly, it has. Um, and, uh, the, the, you know, the point I, I, I've been making, and uh, since I started to, uh, you know, decide to stand, was this very point. It, it's happening in every country. So how on earth can it just be the Labour government? And the reason I'm, I'm standing... Well, the programs even have the same names. Exactly. So um, 
I'm standing here to use the platform and get what mainstream media coverage I can as they cover these, uh, these things like by-elections to get this point across. And I'm going on the line, big brother, the big picture. But what then starts to emerge um, is that people that are coming up to this constituency to support David Davis and, and are on his uh, website, yeah, he's coming up to support me in opposing Big Brother. Well, there are some very strange bedfellows this guy's got. First of all, there's a guy coming up here called Ed Vasey, MP, um, to, to, to oppose the Big Brother state. Well, hold on a second. He was one of the original signatories to uh, something called the Henry Jackson Society, started in 2005, named after a former U.S. senator. And, and then I look at the members of the Henry Jackson Society. First of all, Sir Richard Dearlove, head of MI6 from 1999 to 2004. Erwin Steltzer, former managing director of the Rothschilds Bank, um, now living in London, U.S. economist, a contributor to the Weekly Standard, of course, Murdoch's neocon rag. So they're trying uh, to co-opt the revolution against tyranny. They know they can't stop it, so they're trying to preempt it. So you're preempting, they're preempting. Well, yeah, in, it, it's becoming clear what this scam here that I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of here is, is, is about now, because he was also a resident scholar of the um, American Enterprise Institute, and now he's with the Hudson Institute. Of course, now we're starting to talk major neocon organizations that were uh, orchestrators and propagandists for the war on terror, but it goes further. International patrons for the Henry Jackson Society of this guy who's coming to support David Davis against Big Brother include Richard Pearl, one of the major architects. The of Prince Asian. of Darkness. A Prince of Darkness. William Crystal, co-founder of the Project for the New American Century. James Woolsey, former head of the CIA and neocon. That's Not all the head neocons you just listed. Another international patron, Robert Kagan co-founder of the project the new american century with william crystal senior associate at the carnegie endowment for international peace which is the the uh, reese committee in the 50s with norman dodds uh, uh, found out was actually manipulating war he's the senior speechwriter for george schultz one of the major manipulators behind the scenes uh, in the United States when he was Secretary of State. He's still top kingmaker, yes. Yeah, these are the exactly. These are the people um, who are connected to this organization and this guy, Ed Vasey, who's coming up to support David Davis to fight Big Brother. And there's what, another guy coming up called Patrick Mercer, MP. He's a consultant for something called Blue Hackle which is a security firm akin to Blackwater, that kind of operation. Yeah, private mercs. Let me stop you, David, because yeah. a lot of Americans, people in the U.S., don't know the British nomenclature for elections. By standing, that means you're running for his seat. Uh, he's pulling back in this stunt, you know, to claim he's running from outside to come in and fix things. And, and it's not like he's just signed on to a group that has some neocons on it. They're coming to his district to push and campaign for him. That's what you mean by coming up. So, so yes, these are coming up to this constituency yes, where I'm, I'm sitting in exactly. the middle of the now. The neocons are actively flocking in to this area of England to push this guy actively. Go ahead. Exactly. Patrick Mercer, MP, is also sponsored by something called the Heart Group. Now, this is a guy, just to <laughs> confirm again, who's coming up. To, to support the, the challenge to Big Brother. Well, this heart group that sponsors this Patrick Mercer produces electronic passports, border control systems for security, vehicle registration and tracking, biometric identification systems, etc., etc. And it's very clear that, oh. you, you know what it's like, Alex, if you, if you have um, uh, an awareness starting to um, express itself, an understanding of some of what's going on. You want to put your people in there to become the focus and therefore control and direct or misdirect the steer. that gathering awareness. And more and more, it, it's clear as I'm, I'm, I'm uh, up here going through this uh, election, which I don't want to win, of course. Um, I, I waste of time going to Parliament. But you have to, it. David. I mean, you have no, to win no, now. I don't want to win. I don't want to win because um, what, what it will do is um, catch me in the web, um, which will stop me doing all the other things that I need to do that are far more important. Well, I mean, have you? Cal I understand, but have you calculated? I mean, is this going to hurt who he's running against more than it hurts him? Um, he'll win 
he'll win easily. Um, but I, you're I, just you know, educating people. But to be clear, exactly that's why I'm what they're I'm doing here is this information out. I mean, do you agree? This is what he'll do then. He'll say, "Look, I'm against Big Brother." What we need is this, and it'll be worse, Big Brother, but they'll label that as anti-Big Brother, and then he'll be the savior and only give you the good ID cards that are safe. Yeah, and the other thing that with this happening, and it's already happened, is because he's done this, he's now the, 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 the man the British media go to if ever a Big Brother-type story breaks. It's, it's let's get a comment from David Davis. So he becomes like oh. the, the, the standard bearer. Um, he's the man, and of course... Um, they need uh, people like that to misdirect this gathering awareness. And, and the awareness is not only coming from shows like you and people like me. It's coming from daily experience, of course, now. 